Um, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of uh, a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Um, Consolidon is new age in the sense that uh, we have a digital platform where we get a lot of boutique consulting firms to sign up and then uh, help them connect with their clients. Uh, so it's a different approach to, uh, to setting up a consulting firm. Uh, this model has helped us grow to about um, 200 plus uh, consulting teams over the last five years and delivered several projects across the region over the last few years. Um, we love doing these uh, you know, webinars, panel discussions, uh, where we call some of the senior professionals within our ecosystem to present um, uh, you know, their ideas, their thoughts, share them with the others in the ecosystem. Um, today, we have Jyoti, who's been a personal mentor to me. We have known him for a few years. He's been a part of the ecosystem for a few years now. And um, he's going to be talking about something that I'm de deeply inspired by, uh, exponential organizations and how, uh, how they grow 10x cheaper, faster, better. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of the introducing for him, but I'll let him start with introducing himself and himself and uh, then starting today's uh, talk. Um, one thing I'd love to uh, like to say before Jyoti starts off is, if you don't mind, keep your videos on. It gives energy to the room. The reason we haven't set this up as a regular webinar where, you know, um, where uh, everyone is, uh, uh, you know, sort of hidden and only the speakers are visible is because we want to see you interact with you, etc. So feel free to, you know, type out your questions in the chat during, during the uh, meeting. Uh, feel free to keep your videos on uh, and and we leave some time towards the end for questions and answers as well. Perfect. Sorry, Jyoti, go ahead. Mm. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Jyoti Bose. Uh, uh, we run a business consulting company in the area of organization capacity building to help organizations solve problems of today. And once they have nailed it into today and the survival is no longer an issue, uh, how do you thrive on to 10x faster, cheaper, better is what today's talk is about. Uh, there will be, uh, my colleagues Zahira and Payal are also on the call. Uh, so they will be minding the chat. Uh, but, uh, I'm happy to take questions in the middle. Uh, we'll certainly keep time uh, at the end. And we'll stay on if required for anybody. And anybody wants to do a deeper dive uh, offline later, um, our coordinates I'm sure will be shared by Varun and, and all. And then you could reach out to us. Uh, we are more excited about the purpose and the possibility of uh, uh, this 10x thing. And therefore, um, this is more of a evangelize and from a sense of abundance that we talk about uh, today. Uh, so with that uh, brief pre, I'm based in New Delhi, uh, India, but I spend excellent amounts of time in the Middle East, notably Dubai, and we have reasonable clients, mainly with the government in, in, in that region. Um, so with that brief background, I'll begin, I'll share my slides and, and then we can begin. Uh, you need to enable me to share screen. Uh, Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, could, can you all see my screen? Sure. Thank you. Okay, I'll begin. Uh, first, I'll just explain these. Uh, ex the exponential opportunity is really about exponential organizations. So I, I'll talk about the word organization for a minute, and then I'll talk about the word exponential. The concept of organization is almost 5,000 years old when the armies of Alexander or whatever, the Greek armies and all were there, which was essentially a command and control uh, model coming from a scarcity mindset. And that model has continued into the uh, 21st century, command and control as the way of running an organization. Uh, because it's scarcity, uh, they, these organizations have been able to grow, but not 10x faster, cheaper, uh, better. What do companies who grow, and we've seen many of them in the last 10, 15, 20 years, and we are seeing a unicorn every uh, three days in India, and I'm sure elsewhere in the world. Uh, so this is not happening as accident. Uh, there is some uh, secret sauce and method behind this apparent madness or coincidence. Uh, these organizations are, uh, come from an abundance mindset as the opposite of scarcity. 
example uh, uber driver will also drive lift or kareem or ola depending on which part of the world you are in and uber or the competitor don't care you know uh, that's abundance you know and the guy chooses his time nobody is minding what time comes from what time he goes away so that's abundance so that's the first word i want to explain on the word organization and you need abundance around your thinking around organization can you collaborate rather than compete with competition in areas that you need to google uh, maps are available on apple right uh, for example abundance so even these peers competitors follow up practice abundance the next thing i want to explain to you is the word exponential very simply put exponential uh, uh, so, uh, so okay uh, let me go here uh, exponential essentially the no, first let me explain the word exponential and then i'll go into my slides so uh, not to an um, engineer or a scientific mind but to the layman i would ex explain the word exponential as the one becomes two two becomes four four becomes eight and eight becomes 16 doubling you know every time uh, we get the word covid has taught us the word uh, better made us realize the word but there's some things we don't realize and i'll talk about that uh, so before so that's uh, just to explain those two words exponential organization now i'll just tell you what all i will cover i'll cover we will why we live why we believe we are living in the uh, age of opportunity and indeed the future will be faster better and cheaper than we think and i'll give you evidence of that rather than just uh, you know a, a war cry i will talk to you about how exponential organizations are changing the name of the game of business and we'll give examples of that there are 11 secrets or a secret sauce with 11 ingredients if you wish that exponential organization done and which has been reverse engineered from seeing the success rather than a theory so theory has been distilled out of the practice and we we'll talk about that and the framework and how companies are benefited from uh, benefiting from this exo the short form for exponential approach and we could help you we may not cover too much on that anybody who wants to do a deeper dive we'll briefly cover that if anybody wants to do this is not meant to be a pitch it is uh, we call for our clients we call this an awake session which means wake up and smell the coffee about what's happening out there in the world so this is more of a awake it's not a pitch I and mean, i'll skip through the pitch if anybody wants to reach they can reach us later so why is it the age of opportunity so just to explain we all get this that 30s if if i take 30 steps and one step is 1 meter we go 30 meters you also probably get this that if we take 30 doubling steps we go we will end up at so many meters which is 27 to 28 times round the earth you must have heard this story and as children we would have played those games of uh, i know one grain of rice on, on the first cube of the chessboard a uh, square chessboard etc etc and then by the 64 there's not enough grain in the granary we get that i am an engineer i got that but till uh, covid uh, exposed me to this concept and we started practicing it quite uh, deeply i didn't realize this part here the part i didn't realize that for 15 steps out of those 30 almost nothing has happened and people are dismissive it's deceptive and people uh, ignore it uh, even at 30 uh, 20 steps we are not even 0.1% of the journey at 25% we are 3% of the journey and then suddenly in the last five steps and we saw that happen with covid oh it's happening in wuhan it won't affect us uh, you know these chinese eat bats etc etc and then begin we begin to see then suddenly you know i mean so there are three stages as we call it deceptive where we dismiss gradually and then suddenly and uh, and and we are see, and all these exponential organizations are built on a, a exponential technology which i'll define in a minute uh, for you to understand what happens so as i said there's a knee of the curve at the beginning nothing happens and linear seems to go on winning the the hare is winning for a long time and then suddenly the tortoise seems to take over okay um, so the oldest law, one of the laws exponential so first let me explain to you what does the word exponential technology mean uh, so any technology whose price uh halves and the performance doubles in less than 2 years and this cycle repeats thrice is called an exponential technology that's the definition i repeat the performance doubles and the price halves in a matter of uh, less than 2 years and this cycle repeats thrice so moore's law many of you may have heard moore's law which is the law the, of computing uh, where this uh, gordon moore one of the founders of intel may uh, said that and we saw that the process the computing power of the you know uh, micro, of com, micro computing i mean computing initially and now micro computing and nano computing etc has gone on last year we celebrated 50 years of moore's law and the uh, smartphone that you and i carry has more processing power than the you know computers which launched the apollo and landed on the moon you know just way of how exponential but th this slide establishes to us that actually even before moore's law Yeah, uh, there were 
four different, I mean, you know, Ray Kurzweil, one of the founders of Singularity University, said that I integrated the circuit IC, which started, came, came in the 70s. There were four phases, the transistor, the vacuum tube, the relay, and the electromechanical. And if you plot it on a logarithmic, which is another way of depicting exponential things, you see that it has been in practice for 110 years. So this is the original, if you wish, exponential technology. Today, we are living in a very, very exciting period in, in human history where more than 15 to 20 technologies are exponential. 3D printing, drones, you know, how do you measure drones performance? The amount of weight it carries and the price it costs us. You know, uh, 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 augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, self-driving cars is a use case of multiple converging technologies, biotech, solar. So like the Gutenberg moment of the printing press, we, we have 20 Gutenberg moments, uh, genome sequencing, which is not uh, bi in biotech. These are some of the technologies which have become exponential, whose price is becoming uh, half and the performance is doubling. So, and many of them have reached the gradual stage. Okay, so that's the thing I want to say. Uh, and so here are the predictions based on projection of exponential technologies. In the next 10 years, uh, water will be abundant and free. Three fourths of the world is water. We call we talk about scarcity uh, because access to making saline water to, to you know drinkable water is now reached the gradual stage of the curve. So water, energy, and healthcare will be free and abundant in the next. And that's why we believe the future will be ten may become twelve or eight, but it's in that ballpark. And this is not astrology or astronomy. This is just projections. And I'll show you how by and large experts have got projections uh, wrong, and things have happened faster than predicted in this case rather than slower. Here's the example, and, and you know, just to give you all uh, that in uh, on a 1900 at the turn of the you know, beginning of the 20th century, uh, the problem for the mayor of New York was the amount of horseshit uh, you know on the roads on, on Manhattan roads, and they were getting more budgets to clean up the horseshit. Okay, uh, they actually doubled the budget, and there's one car one car here which is spotted in yellow uh, on 10. 13 years later, uh, you know there's one car, horse here, uh, and all automobiles. So, you know, uh, and there were, uh, and the world, what was the world doing? Increasing budgets for, uh, you know, horseshit cleaning. Uh, so that the carriages could not get tracked. So these things happen much faster than we think, gradually, deceptively, and then suddenly. Okay. Uh, there are some examples here. Initially, you will feel, you will feel the disappointment or what is happening here, etc., and all of that. There's a, there's what we call the, you know, bend in the knee of the curve, and then the exponential jabber. But our human minds think linear, and therefore we get stuck. Okay. Uh, uh, in an organization's case, what happened is launch, like uh, there are many examples, Kodak launched the, you know, smartphone, etc. Uh, Kodak launched the digital phone, a digital camera, and or digital film, but did not, you know, put it because they thought it would disrupt them. So uh, people either get impatient for results, or they feel they'll get cannibalized, and therefore, uh, you know, don't act on that. You're trying to save and preserve the cash cow of the current business, understandable. But meanwhile, things are happening gradually, uh, deceptively, and then gradually. And the disrupt disruption when it comes will be sudden. And often from outside competition, which we'll talk about later. Not often, always. Uh, not from competition. Um, just, to, uh, just to give an example of the sentence, uh, Netflix was not from the television industry or something like that. Uber is not from the auto industry. And Zoom has disrupted the airline industry. By 40% 40, 40 of business travel is gone forever, even after the pandemic. So that's the kind of disruption uh, it comes. Uh, also, I mentioned a comment on experts get it wrong. Here's an example. From 2009 till 2020, the World Energy Outlook, which is the, the, the outlook given to the World Economic Forum by every year, have got it consistently wrong because they think linear. And this is data. Year after year, they make those flat line projections, which you can see starting at the somewhere here, the light gray is going till here. And this is the red bold line is the actuals. So experts can tell you what will go wrong. Experts often don't know what is going to come right or happen in future. So experts can tell you why things won't work rather than tell you. So be very careful. The age of expertise is over. The age of exploration, exp experimentation, experience, fail fast, fail cheap, fail forward is the way uh, all these exponential companies are growing. Uh, another example, the prices of solar, right? I mean, you see the yellow lines and all the, you know, the steep drop in the yellow line, uh, the pr prices of solar. Uh, while you see the black line is coal, in countries which are, don't have strong carbon regulations and restrictions, uh, the price is falling. But in Germany, the black coal is going up because of stricter carbon footprint restrictions, etc. Right? 
um, cultivated meat is a good example. Uh, 2013, a Dutch scientist de developed the first cultivated meat at, at $300,000 a burger. 16 Memphis meats bought it at 20,000 a pound. Future meat technologies brought it down to 100, 100 to 20, 100 to 200 pounds. And uh, now it's at four, four, uh, for four dollars. So dollars, all of these numbers. Are. And similarly for genome sequencing, what was costing a million dollars now is available for less than thousand and the projections that will soon be below hundred. Uh, that's one part I talked to you about exponential technologies. I'll talk about the other part, which is these are converging. Not only are they ex growing exponentially, they are converging. The flying car, which is expected to come out by the you know by next year, uh, uh, has at least seven converging technologies. The lidar GPS accelerometer is coming from the uh, you know laser sensing infrared things. Batteries because of the power that they are they are being being becoming more powerful and lighter. Uh, computer aided design and simulation, material science, nanotechnology, nanomaterials are coming there. 3D printing is becoming cheaper, ubiquitous, and all of that. AI, of course. Uh, and most importantly, uh, the last one, distributed electric propulsion. Essentially, the mindset was that, you know, helicopters, uh, for the, that kind of propulsion, you need a noisy thing, right? But now you have 100, you know, my micro motors, uh, which generate the same amount of power as one, uh, you know, big noisy motor. Uh, but uh, uh, through drones and uh, AI, uh, they are being sequenced, and, and that's what's causing this flying car to come. The flying car will come out of the toy industry where drones came, and not from the automobile, the airline industry. So that's, again, uh, you know, uh, disruption arenas. Here are some examples quickly. 3D printing, 2007, 40000 now $25. Uh, 16x increase in price. Industrial robots, half a million dollars. $5,000. And these are live and in use, not, not just talks. These are live use cases as we talk. Drones now available for $20, uh, 5,000x in 14 years in terms of cost reduction. So just that decept uh, deceptive, gradual, and then sudden. Remember, these are real life examples. Solar, 200x in 30 years. <clears throat> and, and, these, and these trends continue. And we're seeing it all around us. Uh, I have friends in power who keep talking about, you know, how each time the solar bids are going into Dutch auction and going negative. A sensors again revolutionary available at ten dollars. I have clients who are using it in their farms or you know in the offices and everywhere. Um, neurotechnology genome sequencing. We'll be able to customize medication uh, to a customer segment use case of one, right? I mean, it'll be customized for you or for me and our lifestyle. A nanotechnology, you know, yeah, genome sequencing. I already talked about. So Ray Kurzweil, one of the three founders of Singularity University. Uh, along with Peter Diamantis and Salim Ismail. Salim Ismail, who's the author and proponent of this exponential school that uh, I'm talking about today. Uh, he said, we'll experience 20,000 uh, years in the next 100 years. And we're already seeing a lot of that happening. Uh, there are six stages of this disruption journey. The first stage for any company or for anything to start is digitization. We have to be able to have it on IoT or on a computer or on a scan or an image, something we need. We have to move from the physical to the digital. That's the first step that is needed. So whatever we are doing physically, can it move digitally? Think photographs on your phone, right? I mean, what was happening on an album is now on your phone. That's stage one. Stage two is deception and is dismissive, like nothing is happening. It, it, it will be growing, but it will be growing 0.0001 to 0.02 and people laugh at it. Then suddenly it will break. Suddenly one day you will begin to notice it. Then it may be offered free, like Google Maps did away with TomTom. Tom. Then money goes out of the equation, like photographs are now available for free and Kodak was not, or a good example is why did Netflix remove Blockbuster, disrupt Blockbuster? Blockbuster was making 12% of revenues from late fees and did not want to let go of that when Netflix went for them to be bought out. Okay, so, so you begin to, so I often ask my clients, what would happen if the product you sell or the service you offer were available for free? People are not able to think through that question. So money goes out of the equation and then it will be available. It will be available in electronic form. It can go anywhere. 3D printing. I don't have to send designs. I don't have to set up office or, or a factory, right? I can print anywhere. And once you reach that stage, then it becomes democratic and is suddenly available to everyone everywhere. So those are the six stages and you can make out which, which technologies are which stage and where the journey is going. Here's an example of only one of the six. It's called dematerialize.
you, you may wish to comment in the chat if you'd like uh, when okay so uh, that's just by way of background what's happening and it's a reality check on uh, you know what's happening in the world what are these exponential organizations doing and how are they changing the game of business and these are some names here okay uh, if you see uh, i'm just giving examples of the real life impact uh, you know a, a typical fortune 500 year company would take 20 years to get to uh, you know uh, a billion dollar valuation which is at the left side there's a left graph google took around eight years facebook took it progressively came down to snapchat in 2011 get taking around two years and this one taking uh, you know one year. here's a graph uh, i recently saw this uh, left hand side the black uh, graph is uh, 1 billion and this is a 10 billion valuation and see what similar graph on market cap you know and more and more companies joining this so uh, it's all happening it's all happening um, here you probably know this that tesla in 19 was the fourth largest uh, you know automobile company by market size i'll talk about tesla a minute uh, many people believe tesla is an electric car then somebody said, no, Tesla is a computer with wheels. Actually, Tesla is an app on wheels. Uh, the, uh, the software updates every 48 hours. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, uh, people who drove a Tesla from, let's say, New York to Florida uh, in 2019, 20% uh, of the time it was an autonomous drive. In 2020, before COVID started, 60% of the time it was an autonomous drive. So that's how quickly it's changing. And here's, just to give you a sense, just it, it uh, overwhelms us to see it uh, visually. So I'll just show you what happens to Tesla's cap in the last two years till January this year. Just bear with me. Uh, just, so on the right is the Tesla, uh, on the left is the Tesla graph, and here is the, uh, uh, I just watch this. So we're starting from Jan 19. Here we go. Yeah, okay, so I think it started. Yeah, sorry for the delay. And this is before COVID so far. Now COVID happens. On the right hand says the whole auto industry combined, the top 10 players. You know, there are many examples. You must have seen some of this. Uh, 2005 and now, the the and unless you're digital, unless you're tech enabled, if not uh, tech driven, uh, you're not going to become an exponential organization. The other thing which I didn't mention is going exponentially is data. And unless you have a way of look, act, being able to access and man, man, manage the data, you're not going to grow exponential. Uh, so data uh, your customer is available on your customer's phone. Can you access that, for example? There are many examples. Like the, what is happening is. The speed at which companies are going out of business, Kodak took 100 years to go out of business, Tars Records took 40 years, Blockbuster took 19, and now it'll take even less. At the same time as Kodak, Kodak started, in 1996, Kodak was 28 billion in revenues, 140,000 employees. In 2012, while Kodak was going bankrupt, uh, you know, uh, and market cap came down uh, to 1 billion. Uh, Instagram was acquired. Uh, Kodak had 17,000 employees. Instagram had 13. 
I'll skip this, which is uh, I'll, I'll back. Uh, this this is a graph which essentially shows that companies' valuations earlier on the left hand side were built on buildings and equipment, cash and bonds, inventory. Ninety per area, you know, I mean, eighty three percent of the valuation was that white thing, right? This blue thing, the turquoise thing, which is customer data, brand value, patents, intangible assets, is now attributing uh, contributing ninety percent of value, uh, and that valuation is coming from there. And being able to use that rather than from you know, so the valuations are moving from tangible to intangible, and, and data establishes that. Then the physical as the you know book value of these companies is you know one tenth of what their values are. So what is an exponential organization? An exponential organization is one whose output uh, or impact is disproportionately ten x larger than its peers. Um, an average car has fifty thousand pieces. Tesla has forty eight. Just to give you a sense of number of pieces that are in a car, that's ten, not even ten x, thousand x kind of a thing. Just a definition: uh, What is an EXO? The impact is at least ten x larger than uh, peers, and we define that as faster, cheaper, better. Many parts of the business are digitized. I've mentioned that. Uh, we, I can't labor that point enough. It leverages ex accelerating exponential technologies. Uh, some many of those I mentioned the name. Uh, people tend to believe in a naive manner that technology disrupts. Technology never disrupts. A business model disrupts. The, the, the video streaming technology existed much before Netflix came on the horizon. But the way Netflix deployed it is what did the disruption. Uh, video conferencing existing but existed much before Zoom came in. But with Zoom disrupted airline. Uh, you know, uh, similarly Uber or the technology is never a disruptor. It's an enabler, not a disruptor. Disruption is always by the business model, and people don't appreciate that enough. So we have to talk. We have to triangulate exponential technologies. Those 10, 12, 15 of them, uh, business models and exponential attributes, secret sauce, which I'll talk about in a minute after we establish this. Uh, de decreases the cost of demand. You know, I mean, uh, uh, once a flywheel starts. When we hear word of mouth, let's say, oh, why don't you try Airbnb? Uh, Airbnb doesn't need to go do marketing. People go, you know, want to go to an Airbnb because friends had a cool thing. Decreases cost of supply. For Marriott to add 100 rooms would take them a year and so many million dollars. Uh, Airbnb can do it at the click of a button. And it's usually, so the cost of supply comes to near zero. Both cost of demand and cost of supply come to near zero. And that's what leads to exponential valuations. And usually the platform or ecosystem or a marketplace which is a topic of a separate conversation. But society is not ready because we look at things scarcity, local, linear, and present forward. Whereas digital organizations, the digital universe is abundant, exponential, global, and future backward. Let me give an example of future backward. Uh, this is an example from my region. I live in India. Sri Lanka, they're building a port with costing so many billion dollars with Chinese help. Uh, last month, uh, the founder of Exponential, uh, Salim, was invited by the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. And he told them in seven years that you'll build a port, four drones will be able to pick up a, ocean, uh, a, a container from an ocean liner and bring it to the warehouse. Why are you building a port? Uh, that's how uh, uh, future backward thinking starts. Where will the technologies end up in three, five, seven years? Uh, you know, what is the disruption likely? Can I anticipate and you know, uh, pivot in that direction? Uh, so abundance, as I mentioned, physical versus Airbnb is an example of physical. Digital healthcare now, you know, it's, it's available. You know, you can get scans. You can have, you know, all of this happening healthcare. Again, for near free. Local Motors is a good example of a company which is uh, now valued at around $10 billion. Um, it crowdsources. It doesn't have a design department. It crowdsources designs. It crowdsources assembly and builds it out of a garage. Uh, only when the design wins does the guy get paid. And he gets a royalty on the sale of car for the lifetime. So you're able to get the best brains to come and just for the people will, uh, people don't work for free, but people have fun for free. People will hack whole night for free. So you're, you're tapping into that abundance uh, of the top notch people, the brightest people in the world will never work for you, uh, but they may uh, join a competition or a program or initiative that they feel strongly about. So people want to be abundant. Why can't they be abundant? This is a good example. I will finish speaking at 40 minutes and then I'll take questions.
we are obsessed with competition, not the customer, and that's the problem. Uh, so some thoughts I, I'll rush to. I, I'll spend time on the secret sauce. It it doesn't come in our DA. Like you know, uh, the uh, thing is, uh, abundant thought is there is enough for everyone to share, and there will always be more. There, there is never enough. Embrace change. Change is equal to growth. Uh, I, I have an extreme fear of change. Uh, the thought of competing with a competitor does not come naturally. Uh, collaborating with a competitor does not come naturally to us. I mean, we, we, we are, our DNA is built to fight and win lose, right? Uh, whereas abundance is actually win win. We have to collaborate to be successful. Uh, I'll, uh, the deck will be available so you can have a look. I mean, you know, some practices which help, uh, you know, uh, find ways to uh, work, uh, you know, uh, celebrate others' success, right? I mean, let, let's say when a uh, uh, Uber guy, when he wins the program and all, they, he gets Uber uh, employee of the month or whatever, driver of the month kind of things. Okay, so now having given set the context. I'll talk about what is the secret sauce or the exponential formula. So the 11 ingredients, the first is an acronym called MTP, which stands for Massive Transformative Purpose. And the, there are two other acronyms, SCALE, uh, S-C-A-L-A, and IDEA, which I'll talk about in the next, uh, in the subsequent slides. So MT, let me talk about MTP first. MTP is the is a massive transformative purpose. Uh, you now you may say it's like vision or you know, mission or you know of a company. But most company visions, when you read them, they are like, I, me, myself, we'll be the most preferred provider of this, we'll be the leading supplier of this, or we'll be the more, it's about I, me, me, my company and myself. Whereas MTP is actually about the world and the universe. Google's MTP is uh, organize the world's information. Tesla's is accelerate the uh, world's embracing of sustainable technologies. Uh, you know, but Cleveland Clinic is uh, uh, till uh, every child is healthy. Just to give some examples. So, that, so why is the purpose important? It will come back to us. Purpose galvanizes the masses to join you. I mean, let's say Greta Thunberg has purpose and people will spend time and hours and energy just for her cause. Now, uh, there are two ways of handling this. Uh, so once you have a purpose, and that's very important, that you have to access abundance, which is the blue things on the right side. The scale acronym is staff on demand. You must have seen like, you know, most people uh, have staff on demand. Most of these companies have staff on demand, like Zomato or Uber and, and, and people like that. Uh, then you have community and crowd. You will engage the community, uh, which is your extended system of your uh, suppliers, partners, uh, customers, and beyond that, the crowd. Uh, I'll give an example of Xiaomi. Uh, how many, I don't know if you many of you know, Xiaomi is the, is the world's number one um, uh, phone company today, some smart smartphone center. It was number two, and it it has become number one without entering the U.S. market. Okay, uh, it, isn't that remarkable? And it, it the product department, uh, development department has a headcount of zero. So what do they do? Uh, they have three communities online: one for the low end phone, one for the mid end phone, one for the high end phone. And there are these people who are you know, really passionate about phones who will keep giving co comments on I like this lens, we should use that kind of a thing. And then they vote and then th that's how the phones get made. And what do these guys get in return? They get a phone six months before you and I see it in the market for beta testing. And that's their kick. So for the cost of 6,000 phones, uh, you know, they bring out new models every year, uh, three new models every, every, every time. And that's how, and they really, uh, uh, and what do they address? The gap that Apple and uh, you know uh, Samsung, did, uh, how did they become number one phone in uh, China? Because China is far more digital than the rest of the world, and the battery of Apple and Samsung don't uh, uh, die very quickly. They focus on battery over everything else. Just to give an example, so that's how you can co-opt crowds, algorithms. Uh, you'll understand probably anything which is repetitive and follows a set of rules, or the machine can learn the rules needs to be automated. Leveraged assets. Uh, you know, the leverage asset is marrying unmet need with unused resource. I have a spare bedroom. You need a bedroom for the night. Uh, I have a tractor in my farm, which is used only for, uh, which is uh, active only for 4% or, uh, you know, in 24 hours or 365 days. Uh, can I give that to somebody? Unmet need and unused resource. Uh, I'll give a very good example of leverage asset. Uh, it's a 40, 50 year old example from a, a small town called Curitiba in Brazil. Uh, Curitiba, like Brazil, poor country, uh, like you know, granary or to the world, and yet food will rot and go down. So because of distribution, uh, you know, the ch children are not, not educated. The mayor of Curitiba 
uh, came up with a scheme where he said a bag of garbage is currency and uh, a three a child was required to carry three bags of garbage uh, whatever color coded and all of that the first bag of garbage was uh, the bus ticket the second garbage uh, was the school fees for the day and the third bag of garbage was a uh, midday meal so people started getting meals children had gone to school the garbage stuff lumping up in the slums was now going to the bus depot of the school and getting cleaned and the economy rolled leverage asset engagement not 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 the way we use the word engagement which is uh, employee engagement or this is engagement of the community the crowd uh, you know when you get down from a uber the driver is keen keen that you rate him incentivization gamification uh, you know feedback all of those things engagement so these are SCALEs, how you engage the crowd, uh, a lot of right brain stuff, creativity, growth, and amidst, uh, amidst uncertainty you're operating. Now, once we have access abundance, we need to uh, be, be able to manage the abundance, which is how the, where the left side of the screen comes. The first thing obviously you need is interfaces, which means uh, how do I, uh, what, what do I do to make, you know, get, a, get a pipe or a sensor to bring all that data out there into in here. Dashboards, not the boardroom or corporate or balance co card dashboards, but dashboard at the edge. Uh, snow melts at the edge you can't command and control from the center so that the uber driver knows that I, my my, my, my this, this passenger is three minutes away and after dropping him my next passenger is seven minutes away right and my incentive has come or my fees have come into my thing and you know etc so that that's a dashboard uh dashboard at the edge not not at, in the boardroom experimentation fail fast fail cheap you know fail uh, forward right uh autonomy Without autonomy, you can't have experimentation, you can't have abundance, you have to let go. Command and control, the whole abundance thing falls. The th last one is social technologies. Social technologies are uh, not social media, which is which is a part of engagement on the right-hand side on the customer. Social technologies are things like Slack and Yammer and Google Docs and anything which we need so that we can collaborate both within the organization and with, with our larger community and crowd. So while the right side is about you know creativity, growth, and uncertainty, this is about trying to balance it, find some method order control and stability okay uh just uh, mtp really you know people, people use different words people say oh that's uh, you know it's like we vision vision is where uh, you know where we are going path path is the mission the what are what, what is the road of we are on travel traversing every day and why are we entering the journey is the purpose and that's the mtp the why is important you may additionally have you know things like values which are very important to anchor uh, signposts and so and here are some uh, you know googles i mentioned to you earlier all these MTPs, so I said Cleveland Clinic, um, I think uh, the answer was Boston Children's Hospital until every child as well. These are about making the world or the planet a better place. And, uh, you know, uh, that that is what gets communities and crowds and others to join you for free. Like, okay. Uh, same things, uh, you know, I, I've explained that, uh, you, uh, on, uh, you know, you tap into abundance with scale and you manage abundance with ideas. Uh, and here's a small Khan Valley secret. You need here's the know. founder. It okay. might seem as though unicorns like Uber or Airbnb have just been in the right place at the right time. Or maybe it's just luck. But as I've shown with many companies, exponential results can be deliberately engineered. And I'm going to show you how. Take YouTube. They went from being funded by the credit cards of the founder to being acquired by Google for $1.4 billion in less than 18 months. And then there's Instagram. But at the same time as Kodak was shutting down, Instagram gets acquired by Facebook for a billion dollars after just three years and with 13 employees. These companies are what we call exponential organizations or EXOs. They have 10 times the impact of their competition. If you're a leader in an organization and you're passionate about building an amazing company, you have an ambition to make this company more than just a way to get by, you should be working on becoming an EXO like YouTube or Instagram. Because if you're not, other people aren't. There are 11 attributes of EXO that I want to share with you. The first and most important is what we call a massive transformative purpose or your MTP. This is your why, what gets you up at 6 a.m. It's what inspires you, what gels a community around you. Next, we have staff on demand. The industrial age is over. Even big companies like EMP are now outsourcing what they can. This makes your company agile, flexible, fast moving, and super cost effective. Then you have community and crowd. An EXO builds systems to get the best people to come to you. They learn how to leverage growing communities to scale faster and bigger than at any time in the history of business. The fourth is algorithms. The best EXOs leverage data and algorithms to scale in ways that weren't possible even five or ten years ago. Google's PageRank algorithm earns more than a billion dollars a week. 
UPS saves a billion dollars a year by routing 55,000 trucks efficiently with an algorithm. Number five is leveraged assets. Own only what's absolutely critical and outsource everything else. Think Airbnb being the largest hotel chain in the world without owning a single property. Or Uber, a taxi company that owns no taxis. And number six is engagement. You can track in real time how users are interacting, what's working in your marketing, and get, be get feedback on how to improve and where. You're engineering the behaviors you want from your community. The seventh one is interfaces. Big data is big, and an EXO chooses its data wisely. Filter the external chaos into usable and actionable information. That's how you stay agile while scaling. Number eight is dashboards. EXOs are very data driven. Companies like Walmart who track all inventory and credit card transactions in real time. They know the instant something happens, okay. happens and they can react very fast. Number nine is experimentation. An EXO is constantly iterating on everything and takes calculated risk to test the boundaries of what's possible. They think, measure, test, iterate, and they do it very, very fast and in real time. Tenth is autonomy. The old industrial business model is completely outdated. Zappos employees do absolutely what it takes to keep the customer happy. Mind Valley is a fun, flexible workplace built on love. These are make what make an EXO faster and more accountable with amazing morale. And finally, number 11, social technologies, social platforms like Slack, Yammer, Chatter that allow EXOs to make fast decisions, leverage community, and enable peer-to-peer -peer interactions. This is a brief rundown of the 11 attributes that make up an exponential organization. But to become an EXO and you're an existing organization, you need to execute on about four of them. If you're a startup, you should be going after all 11. That's the secret. When you're ready to learn more, I explain each one in more detail in a blog post I've linked to below. And so to go to that page and get the full story, see you there. Okay, so. Um... I'll skip this, uh, you know, I mean, so uh, people ask, what are we running? Are we running a marathon and, um, you know, uh, are we running a sprint? And really the digital world is actually a series of sprints. You know, I mean, you have to run a series of sprints. We got a sprint a -thon. Why EXO? We are really entering with all these technologies and the way data is being captured, you know, you know, massaged and, you know, monetized. Um, to succeed, you have to become innovative, agile, adapt, adaptable, and purpose-driven. And this is a proven approach. I mean, this is the approach that has helped these companies. When we watch the company succeed, uh, we see that they use all of these things. And uh, therefore, it just makes sense to start if you know the formula to begin this way. In fact, each day I read a story of a unicorn in India. We're reading one every three days nowadays. Uh, it seems like they've read the book and they're following it, but they seem to be doing it intuitively or just by understanding uh, from the community that they live in. So, I mean, we have many services that we can offer. I mean, we can offer to collaborate. We can do that. I, I'm, I'm not going to spend time on the pitch. Uh, this open EXO sprint, it's a 10 week pro proven method to help your company get started on this journey, is something that we offer. Um, I, I didn't want this to be a pitch. I'm, uh, uh, the main challenge, so people ask us who's competition to EXO. The competition is the existing new immune system, which kills any new idea or says, no, I mean, I mean we know better. And that's really the one that we need to uh, manage and attack or navigate through. Mm. I'm going to skip all this. Uh, so, and that's us roughly. Uh, me, my colleague Zaira is uh, South Asia's first sprint coach, and Payal also on the call is South Asia's first sprint consultant. Uh, we can help companies do that. And finally, I want to say that we rely on a large ecosystem of 8,000 and growing people who are technology specialists, transformation specialists, business model platform specialists, all of them on the EXO platform, uh, whom we can drag and drop to help, uh, you know, uh, help guide, de de help design, deliver, develop, and implement uh, the things. Uh, final check-in. Uh, if your survival is an issue, then you obviously can't be thinking EXO. If, if a business can take a survive a pause from survival, it's a good time to think there. So, uh, there are enough early warning signals there, uh, you know, and the signals are the data of the future. I mean, either you can sense it or we can help you sense it uh, to see that, you know, uh, disruption never comes from competition. So we're focusing on competition or your product, you're not going to see it. You have to see it at the customer end, at, at the as a snowman's at the edges. Uh, you know, I ask companies or owners to reflect on these questions. 
what i mean people when you can't aren't able to explain why some the while with the while the world is de growing some companies are growing so fast uh and i'd ask them to ask this question to them finally if you got kicked out as leadership what would the new leadership to do because sometimes we have the frog in the well we don't realize that that we are in the middle of this change so thank you um i have 10 minutes and more uh, for any questions um, i can stop sharing and i can take questions uh varun over to you to manage or you know and navigate this part sure thanks jyoti that was fascinating uh, i love i love hearing that this is i think the third or fourth time i've heard that but i still love it because it's so uh, uh so inspirational right sort of so focused on moving forward so uh, i'd uh, if uh, anybody has any questions feel free to ask if you have any comments feel free to uh, make any comments uh, we will do a photo at the end uh, before we close out so i'll ask everyone to turn on the videos fix their hair for that moment before that if you have any question etc so there are people asking about the slides uh, varun i if you have the emails and send them or you have the deck you can send it out yes absolutely uh, yeah, so yeah. we will be sending uh, out abundance it's all free absolutely so we will be sending a recording as well as uh, you know the slides to everyone on the uh, who attended today um all right so, I, i have a question if i may uh, to to jyoti uh, thank you that's for very interesting um I, I I understand. I, I I get it. You know, I haven't maybe used some of those terms that you've used, but it's fascinating uh, to be able to level set my experience with what you've spoken about. Uh, you've you've name checked a lot of very successful companies. I guess you're helping a whole number of other companies who hope to be the next uh, unicorns or decacorns. Is is that your area of focus? Or, or? Yes. 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 Yeah. I just yeah. I want to just make one caveat. Uh, uh, when you start helping companies, things happen deceptively, and it takes a long time for the gradual and the suddenly. So people have to be patient as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, and I, and I guess you're gathering a number of people around you who have the skills to help those companies prosper. Uh, we are a partner. We collaborate globally, and so we can help you in uh, in Spanish, and you know, I'm mean, able to drag and drop a Spanish IoT expert who has worked in fashion. you know we can get you you know specific support to that level of uh, on a paper half hour paper hour basis rather than you know have to bring in mckinsey for a million dollars sure thank you the other part of the our approach is we are not consultants who come and embed consultants for 18 months to help transform you uh, we we are like coaches and therapists we work with you iteratively and we bring in the, uh, whoever needs to be brought in so that we can get done uh, our job is to embed capability in the organization to take it forward and we want to be out in 18 months not stay there okay so there is a very specific question around how can we apply the exo framework to a telemedicine company i think that's a fairly specific question then if you don't mind you know what we'll do is uh, we'll set up a call between you and jyoti so that you know he can answer that question i think uh, expecting the other audiences time so i think uh, let's let's do the photo now and then of course if anybody has any other questions uh, feel free to think them through and ask them as well uh, could i ask everyone to like i said uh, switch on your videos uh, just for a minute if that's okay and uh, like i said if you have hair fix your hair and uh, somebody's here just in time for the photo as well <laughs> I'll give you all a minute uh and just as I do that I have a delivery um, I just came home to pick up this delivery okay uh I'll say 1 2 3 EXO 1 2 3 EXO perfect great thanks so much for that any other questions before we close out yeah varun i have a question uh, to ask uh, jyoti you mentioned that you can help uh, startups to grow uh, faster and probably help them by using uh, your network at what level 
of startups you feel you will be able to help uh, is it even before uh, pre revenue or or the startups who have attained certain kind of uh, stability revenues and then only they should come to you or or anybody can come anybody can come see from the idea stage you can help now do they have the stamina the there is a staying power and the funding to survive and all is a separate subject right i mean uh, so but uh, it's a good uh, practice to build a startup from the idea to a pre seed stage on all 11 uh, exo attributes as you heard salim say a startup is a wonderful opportunity to start, you know start, uh, open your mind exponentially to examine those 11 elements of the secret sauce and how to apply it to telemedicine or whatever it is that i'm trying to uh, solve for uh, so that's i hope that answers your question yeah okay thank you thank you any other questions uh, are there any questions in the chat or any other questions okay so uh, absolutely if there's no other questions we can close out and um, feel free to get in touch with jyoti get in touch with us we'll be in touch with you with the video and the slides of course and anything you need uh, Feel feel free to reach out to us, Dave. I think you have a question. Uh, Dave, uh, my name is Drop Off. I'm now another meeting to go to. So just like to say thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Excellent, excellent support. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Great presentation. Great presentation. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. I, I felt a rush a bit sometimes. Thank you. That's life. <laughs> no problem. Perfect. Uh, then thanks everyone, and uh, hope to see you again very soon as well. Thank you. Thanks for organizing for us. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye now.